All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pride of Ramblings. I am your host, the Bardic One, and we're here to discuss some all Japan pro wrestling. Last time we discussed the awesomeness of Japan pro wrestling, we discussed New Japan and their top championship. Well, for all Japan, I thought we'd do something a little different, and we would discuss their top tournament tournament that they are known around the world for and that is the world's strongest tag determination league now occasionally here in the western half of the world it is referred to as the real world tag league and its first year was referred to as the open tag league uh, real world tag league comes from a mistranslation with the word strongest being mistaken for the word real when it comes to going from Japan to English. So that's kind of what we ended up with, but most folks in the West that follow Japanese wrestling have since learned over the decades that it is officially strongest. Now, the World's Strongest Tag Determination League started in 1977 and is usually run on the first weeks of December. The tournament is held under round-robin rules with two points for a win, one for a draw, and zero for a loss. In the earlier tournaments, only a time limit draw would provide the one point with other methods, such as double disqualification and double countouts, providing nothing for either team. Now, between 88 and 1994, the World's Strongest Tag Termination League Tournament was given a little bit more prestige when they began a tradition where the AGPW World Tag Team Championship would be vacated in time for the tournament, and thus the tournament champions would be the new tag team champions. The rule was then reinstated for the 2012 tournament, but was ignored the following year and then used in 2014. In 2000 and 2015, the vacancy was determined by separate post-tournament playoffs between the second and third places. So there you go. The team of Tenkoji, being composed of Hiroyoshi Tenzan and Satoshi Kojima are the only team to win both the World's Strongest Tag Determination League and its counterpart in New Japan Pro Wrestling, the World Tag League, and in fact did it in the same year, which was in 2008, further cementing them as a Hall of Fame tag team in Japanese wrestling. As we said, the tournament has run, started running in 1977, and has run every year since. So let's break down your winners and see how many truly legendary wrestlers have competed in one. In 1977, it was run won by real life brothers Terry Funk and Dory Funk Jr. 1978, it was won by Giant Baba and Jumbo Surata. 79, the Funk Brothers won again. 80, Bob and Surata would win again. 81 would see a third team win it when Bruiser Brody and Jimmy Snuka would pick up the win, only for Dory and Terry to win their third tournament. However, in 83, Bruiser Brody wins again with new partner Stan Hansen. This, of course, being a team that was legendary in Japan because, well, the only person that could knock around people like Bruiser Brody was Stan Hansen. Genichiro Tenru and Jumbo Surata won in 1984. And in 85, Stan Hansen would team up with Ted DiBiase, the future Million Dollar Man, to win it again. But Tenru and Surata would return once again in 86. 87 saw Surata team with new partner Yoshiaki Yatsu to win. 88 saw Stan Hansen win with his third different partner, this being Terry Gordy. 
usually associated with the fabulous Freebirds. But in 89, we saw new winners as two former multi-time champions teamed up in Tenru and Hansen. 1990 and 1991 saw the first back-to-back -back champions with Dr. Death Steve Williams and the aforementioned Terry Gordy. Their team would go on to be quite iconic in All Japan Pro Wrestling. 1992 saw Mitsuharu Misawa team up with Toshiaki Kawada. However, in 1993, Misawa would get a new partner in Kento Kabashi. And not only would they win the tournament, but they would do it in 94 and 95, being the first three-peat champions, or at least consecutively. 1996 saw the breaking of their streak as Akira Tayu and Toshiaki Kawada teamed up, scoring the win again in 1997 as well. 1998 and 1999 saw Jun Akiyama team up with former winner Kento Kabashi to win back-to-back -to -back tournaments. 2000 saw previous winner Dr. Death Steve Williams team up with Mike Rotundo, a.k.a. IRS, a.k.a. Michael Wall Street, a man who is very well known here in America, to take the win. 2001 saw Keiji Muto, a.k.a. the Great Muta, win his first Tag Determination League trophy with Taiyo Kea. 2002, though, Taiyo Kea would win it with new partner Satoshi Kojima. 2003, Satoshi Kojima won it with new partner Kaz Hayashi. 2004, Taiyo Kea would come back to win it with Jamal, a.k.a. Umaga, a.k.a. Edward Fatu, he of the Anawa family. Which, if you know American wrestling, you know the Anawa family, especially currently in WWE where they compete as the Bloodline. Ooh, see how it all ties together. This brings us to 2005 when Hall of Fame bound icons in many countries, Bubba Ray and Devon, aka the Dudley Boys, would pick up their first win. 2006 saw Tenzan and Kojima win. 2007, Keiji Muto returns with new partner Joe Doring. However, Tenzan and Kojima would come back to win it in 2008. Keiji Muto would not be denied though as he now teams up with Matsukatsu Funaki to win the tournament once again. 2010 saw Kenso, aka Kenzo Suzuki, teaming up with Masayuki Kono. 2011, Seiya Sanada, who had a run as just Sanada in TNA, would team up with Atsushi Sakai, also known simply as Kai. 2012 saw Manabu Soya team up with Takeo Omori. 2013, Suwama teamed up with former champion Joe Doring. 2014 saw Jun Akiyama team up with Takeo Omori. 2015 was Kento Mahara team up with Suwama. 2016, Manabu Soya teamed up with Takeo Omori. 2017, Suji Ishikawa teams up with Suwama. 2018, Dylan James and Joe Doring win it all. 2019, Ishikawa and Suwami take it again. 2020 and 2021 saw back-to-back -back winners with Kento Miyahara and Yuma Aoyagi. Leading up to 2022, the most recent tournament where Kento Miyahara won it with new partner Takuya Nomura. This is insane. 
This is a lot of winners, a lot of repeaters, including a lot of folks telling that story psychologically of, hey, I won it with this guy. Next year we failed to win it. I'm going to come back with a new partner and win it. Sometimes even from there, they would fail to get that two-peat because their former partner from a couple iterations ago comes back with a new partner. <gasps> Tag team. Break apart. Collision. Woo. Craziness. And let's be honest, folks. Even if you only follow American wrestling, there are some major Hall of Fame names dropped there. Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, Ted DiBiase, Teddy, Ted Gordon, Ted Gordy, not Teddy Gord, that would be weird, Terry Gordy even, if you really want to call him this proper name, but as a, okay, let's start from the top. Even if you only know America, you have the Funk Brothers, Bruiser Brody, Jimmy Snuka, Stan Hansen, Ted DiBiase. Mike Rotunda, Terry Gordy, Steve Williams. Again, people like Great Muda, who had ex who had runs in WCW. So even if you don't know nothing about Japan, there's a lot of years where big name American wrestlers would come in and win it all. And of course, the aforementioned Dudley Boys. Winning it in 2005 to further cement their argument as one of the greatest tag teams of all time. This is a huge thing. And as I said, the tournament does continue on since it is not quite the end of the year. The 2023 tournament has not commenced, but we have no reason to think there won't be one. And this doesn't even include all the people that competed but never won such as Red Bastien, The Destroyer, Abdullah the Butcher, The Sheik, Nick Bockwinkle, Blackjack Lanza, Billy Robin, Ooh, Mil, Mil Mascaras, Mr. Wrestling One, Wahoo McDaniel, Dick Slater, Ricky Steamboat, Les Thornton, Larry Dax Henning, Harley Race, Mark Lewin, Tiger Jeet Singh, Jay Youngblood, and again, again, I'm just picking on the folks that would be known here in Japan, or here in America, I'm not counting the Japanese legends that have competed, because this is the point we're trying to make. Oh, One Man Gang. Another great one. Woo. Let's see who else we have. Oh, Rick the Mar Mar Rick Martell, Tom Zink. Look at all these names. Oh. Dan Spivey, Johnny Ace, better known as John Laurinaitis. In recent years, Phil Hickerson, Jerry Blackwell, aka Crusher Jerry, uh, Furnace and Crawfit, Canadian tag team that had a run in WWE in the late 90s. Uh, Knobs and Sags, aka the Nasty Boys, competed. Dynamite Kid. The list just goes on and on. Like every year you go down, you can pick peg big names from the West. And that's the thing about the world's strongest tag determination league is it so very quickly established itself as a major tournament. And all Japan made sure every year that major American names would appear in the tournament, including some of them being the only time that year they appeared in all Japan. So it was a must-see thing for the fans that over the years it's become almost as important a win as an actual championship run in all Japan. 
everybody is, has competed for it, practically. You know, if you did a tour in all Japan, anytime from the late 70s to now, odds are you competed in the, in the Tag Determination League. This makes it a pretty real and pretty crazy tournament. How's it compete with American tournaments? Well, there's not much. Tag team wrestling's never been as huge in America as it has been in Japan. You know, Chikara to ride with their, uh, they had a big tag team tournament that they ran for most of their existence. And it did great, but it never quite achieved that absolute pedigree of the Tag Determination League. And as I said, all Japan or New Japan's got their equivalent. And it's great, but they've got so many other big tournaments like the G1 Climax. It kind of gets lost in the shuffle a few years depending on who wins. At the end of the day, if you're talking tag team glory, you got to look at the Tag Determination League outside of winning an actual championship. In fact, as we've said, for a large chunk of years, winning the Tag Termination League actually won you the Tag Team Championship. So it all came together. Amazing. So with that in mind, we are going to go ahead and sign off. And I will encourage you to please consult any uh, video source you have to watch some of these tournaments. If you're a fan of tag team wrestling, this is about as good as it's ever going to get. Um, All Japan released a lot of the tournaments in their entirety on uh, home video release over the years, so you should be able to find them on online resources. Uh, I'm sure especially a lot of the older ones are floating around the internet to view if you're not a physical media person. Go for it. Like, you can pretty much pick any year and you're going to see great tag team wrestling. You're going to see excitement. And in the end, you're going to see people snatch glory and truly appreciate it. Because that's the thing is, at the end of the day, yes, wrestling is scripted. Wrestling winners are predetermined. But, when you're being given the honor of winning a tournament like this that that has tag teams booked from around the country and has existed for whew, let's see 77 to 2023 that is 40 whew, 40 dude, hold on I gotta do some quick math there 336 46 years that says a lot. You know, this is a tournament that every year crowds show up for. The audience is emotionally invested in seeing somebody go through all the brackets and claim the win. So, to be a part of it alone is a lot of coolness. To win it all, that feels good. Even if you knew you were going to win it all, to feel just the audience reaction. You can, I mean, ask any of those people that have won. Go look up shoot interviews from them. They'll tell you. Winning a big thing, big deal tournament like this gives you a genuine, true sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. The fans are with you. They are happy for you. They respect the physical toll that these matches take place on your body. They look forward to seeing where that tag team goes from there after such a big win. All of it. It's all there. In that moment. And you get to claim that glory for a year. Maybe longer. Because as we saw, a couple of those people, they did it back to back. And that's an accomplishment too. So... Tune in next week. We're not going to talk about pro wrestling, but it will be entertaining. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave comments, and more importantly, 
feel free to toss suggestions my way. But remember, no matter what we talk about, first rule at Roulette Productions is always we're here to have fun and we're here to enjoy our entertainment. So keep that in mind if you ever want to make a suggestion for a topic. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.